probably the steepest thing I've ever skied. I'm not gonna lie, I'm pretty nervous. Uh, well, hopefully I'll see you at the bottom. There is no justice when so few have so much and so many have so little. All right. So since you say life and you're talking like big picture now, so let's talk about life. Um, so you got injured, um, you redshirted, and then you said that you had to get away, go away. You had to find your yeah. way. What happened? Where did you go? And then, yeah, yeah let's go there. Let's talk, talk about traveling. All right, Swartik. Well, I, uh, I had this weird aff affinity for danger, kind of adrenaline. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if you got that when you were around me, but <laughs> I, uh, I turned into a real risk taker. And like first summer after sophomore year, I sped over to Spain. Um, I lived for the second time and I managed to run with the bulls. Uh, which was real, real fun. Pretty dumb the way I did it, but pretty fun. Holy um, shit. Like, do we have any record of this? I want to see some of this. It's just like, I yeah, mean, I, I got some pictures. I'll send you some pictures. Oh, uh, please do. Please freaking do. I think there might be a video that you can see me running with the bulls. I don't know if I can find it. Um, then the next summer, uh, when I was get, first getting hurt, I was like, screw this. I was making some money. I was like, I need to get out of this country. And I left, uh, to I never scuba dived before, and I had always heard of this place, which was the number one place on earth, um, but very dangerous. And I was like, you know, I'm gonna go there. So I had a little money saved up. I went and bought a ticket with no plan, and uh, bushwhacked it, got an illegal certification, and did this dive, which was uh, like 150 feet past your allowed dive with all these sharks and stuff, and that was fun. Holy shit. So you have this trend, and then by the time I graduated, everyone's applying to jobs. And uh, I know I'm not playing a fifth year. I can't even walk, so I'm not, I'm not thinking <laughs> of playing sports again. Yeah. And uh, everyone's applying to jobs, and I'm like, no, nope, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to figure it out. I'll probably take off to South America. And everyone's laughing and stuff. And sure enough, two weeks before graduation, I just buy a ticket, a uh, one-way ticket, or maybe a round trip. Never used the round trip, so it was pretty much one way. And uh, took off for South America with my snowboard and saxophone. With your snowboard and saxophone. Yeah, and I uh, I lived there for seven months. Holy shit! Yeah, that was uh, tough, very tough, but fun. So I don't know why I thought you were an uh, instructor teaching people how to ski is like I thought I don't know if that was just something that came up is that something that you ever did at all like we did you teach people how to ski or was that never even a thing no I think that was my goal that was my original goal I was like I'm gonna oh, go down okay. there I'm gonna get a job at a ski area and this will be dope this will be perfect this is my dream didn't work out like that no work <laughs> no snow uh one thing led to another. I ended up skiing a ton, but I was living in a van in the middle of the mountains, uh, cooking out of the back of the van, not showering for weeks at a time. Sounds I like mean, life. It, it, it was uh, it was fun. It was fun, but it was pretty uh, hairy at times. I'd say the least. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I saw the I saw the video though. I mean. When I saw, when I watched the video, it looked amazing. Obviously, those are the clips of just the good times or the exciting things that were happening. But it just it just looked amazing. It just looked amazing. So it's probably the steepest thing I've ever skied. I'm not gonna lie, I'm pretty nervous. Uh, well, hopefully I'll see you at the bottom. I think traveling to me just means enjoying life and really earning the chance to explore not only the world, but all the cultures, customs, and traditions that the people of this earth offer, you know? And I think, I think that's what's so valuable about travel. It's not hopping in the van, the bus, or the car. It's, it's really immersing yourself in another one's culture and learning to understand how, how someone else so different from you can think so similarly. Three, two, one, bungee! Whether it's bungee jumping, flying a plane or, or backcountry skiing, 
I'm addicted to these adventures, not because, you know, I want to brag at the dinner table, but rather because I really want to inspire others to achieve their own dreams. I mean, I, I truly believe that the world is a magnificent place, and my hope is that one day I can show everyone just how attainable this all is. See? I guess I walk these paths, you know, in, in hopes of inspiring others to find their own. And all in. Uh, but I did see those huge ass cliffs. So when you're talking about that, that, that adrenaline rush, my God, like that's an understatement. That shit looked scary as all hell. Yeah, I mean, there was some, there's some couple, a couple of things that I was like, holy shit. And I remember what's one thing is called the Super C. It's a very famous shoot. Some people say it's the best in the world, not in terms of hardest, but uh, like overall longest run or whatever. And uh, I was in Chile, Portillo. And I remember I'd, I had gone on Facebook, found some group, posted in the group, anyone want to chill and ski? Some guy got back to me, I ended up going up with them, convinced one guy to drive two and a half hours to this place with me. Hiked up this mountain for six hours got to the point where there's a traverse across the mountain and a traverse is like a small catwalk um and if you fell you're dead i mean 100 percent, you are dead and we're looking across this thing and my friend's like we've hiked six hours already and uh my friend's like i can't do it and he turns around and i'm like i'm i'm sorry but dude i have to do this if i don't come down in an hour call the ski patrol i'm probably dead Jeez. And uh, and it was fine, though. It wasn't that bad. So many people before have done it. And get to the top, I mean, it's just euphoric. I mean, it's just the most beautiful thing you've ever seen. That's and that feeling of the adrenaline is kind of like the same as sports. It's, you know, it's. I think that's why I'm so addicted to adrenaline is from the sports. So I always seek out these things to, to do that are uh, on the edge, I guess. I'm holy shit. Uh, okay, so I'm pretty sure that 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 traverse that you know that really really high mountain whatever cliff um, was part of the video, right? Because I, I do remember seeing something. Yeah, yeah. the squeak in there. I tried to get. I think I had a, a couple of videos of it. All right, awesome. Because I mean, holy shit, Nate. Holy shit. Uh, so so, Nate, you've kind of lived an amazing life, and you're how old? Twenty two, twenty three. I'm twenty two. You're 22 years old and you've traveled the world. You, you're fluent in Spanish. You've played. Yeah, I do speak, awesome. I speak some Portuguese and Arabic as well. You speak some Portuguese and freaking Arabic. Oh, my God. Now, you, you, you've done a shit ton. A shit, shit ton. Um, I don't. So what's the what's so so when you were traveling and I know I have this. Uh, you showed me your Instagram. What's, what is it called? Travel. Um, your the Instagram. Pathfinder. It was the called Pathfinder. The Pathfinder. Yes, the Pathfinder. When did you start with that? And is this is I feel like that is do you do you think that's gonna be your thing? Yeah, it was initially that was the goal. I was gonna leave college and try to make this a life for myself doing stupid shit. And uh and I tried to make this account. Um it was just gonna be me and it was like I was in doing the coolest stuff, so I had awesome pictures and uh and I started bringing other people. I met so many other amazing people. What you do when you travel who have done things that are, you know, otherworldly. You know, I met someone who, who lived off $2,500 in a year, three years, um, hitchhiked across the ocean, never worked a day, and somehow survived with flying colors, didn't have a laptop or a computer. Met someone, you know, medic in Antarctica for a year, never saw a single person for, like, you Holy meet these people, shit. and I was like, I'm going to bring all these people together, uh, try and make a, a magazine or something, and it proved kind of hard. It proved kind of difficult because uh, I was working. I was working as a writer and volunteering to survive while I was traveling. So yeah. I'm writing for 10,000 words, which is like 40 pages for okay. $100, $150. What are you? Holy shit! Are you serious? This is like crap. It's like the worst, worst thing you can imagine. What were you writing for? 
uh, I was literally junk for someone. And then I got a couple of nice gigs. I was an outdoor product tester. So I would test equipment and stuff and write about it. I got paid better. But I'd be hopping around like, all right, I have like this much money today. What, what can I eat? I can't eat anything. So I'd get, I'd, I remember I'd get rotisserie chicken from the s- supermarket, mm-hmm. which was like six bucks. And, uh, and bread. Bread's very cheap down there. And I would have the salt too. I always have salt. Like I have salt. And I'd eat that for, that, would, that had to last me three or four days. That's insane. And I would be eating, sometimes it was like $2 for a week. Like, and food costs the same down there. So I'm literally just eating like rice and hot dogs. Oh my God. If I even say that out loud, I'm going to throw up. <laughs> <laughs> it's literally disgusting. Rice and <laughs> hot dogs. Oh my God. Oh, wow. Wow. And uh, that's when I was like, wow, like really poor. I was like, dude, this is not the move. And, uh, and yeah, I, I kept, kept thinking it was a move. So I kept going, living like complete poverty, volunteering. I mean, you're a slave too, to these volunteers. Cause of course you're sleeping there and you're not making any money, but they, you live with them and you work for them so they can just abuse you. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> like you were you end up working so much and like, you're not getting anything. You're, you're literally eating like cereal. I, well, first place I worked at was a vegan hostel. And I lost 20 pounds in two weeks. That's insane. It was just rice. Oh. Holy shit. It was that, yeah. So are you going to jump back on that path find a horse? What's the plan? What's so the I move? Might, I, got I, there. I got a little sidetrack there. I got a sidetrack there. I probably, okay. I, I might. I think the real thing is I'm just addicted to these adventures. Mm. So I might try to like figure out how to fundraise for myself and then make movies out of them or, or connect it to a larger picture, you know, to give back. But uh, to a degree, I do think people want to see someone do stupid shit, and I don't mind they, being that person. Of course they do, Nate. I mean, like, I think when I was going through your Pathfinder um, Instagram account, it's legit. Like, I mean, like, that is what you need to do. Like, movie, whatever, a camera, snap. I don't care, like, how you do it, how you record yourself living through these crazy adventures. You need to do that. It's legit. It's amazing. Like, I, I get a little excited when I get to flip through the picture and I see you, on, <laughs> like, on top of the freaking sailboat looking, like, 100 feet in the air. I'm like, this is life. I get to be you for like 15 seconds. I'm like, we got, this is what you need to do, Nate. If you're going to be traveling, if you're going to be doing these adventures, like, I mean, you, you can't not, you can't not record it. You can't not have some record of it um, because it's, it's kind of, it's kind of great. It's, it is kind of great. Uh, I just, I like, I don't know. I call this the everyday <laughs> hero show, right? Um, yeah. And you've just, you you've done just a million things like the, I, we could, I could ask just a million things, but what kind of advice? Cause it seems like you are moving forward and you're, you're really into this having adventure. What kind of advice would you give someone who wants to do what you do? And when I say do what you do, I mean like travel. And of course, I mean, not everyone has a million dollars in the bank. Like how, do, how, what kind of advice do you give someone wants to travel, doesn't have the money, doesn't have enough money to like live large when they are traveling. Um, and want to do some crazy shit. Uh, I don't know how many people there are that are like that. But first off is just n- know what you want to do. I mean, mm. if you want to travel, travel. If you don't, fuck it. It doesn't matter. You don't need to travel. Like, if that's not your thing, don't do it. But whatever it is, do it. And I mean, do it like, you know, from the athlete perspective, you, you invest uh, as much percentage of, you can, of your energy as you can, you know? So mine's traveling, so I do travel. And that's why when you talk about money, is money important? Yes, money is important. Anyone who tells you money is not important is an idiot. It is. But is a lot of it important? No. I mean, I went down there with practically no money for seven months, and I ran out of money after two. And I was surviving because I made, I made it work. I mean, also because you have to. You have no other choice. Exactly. You know, like you have no other choice but to learn Portuguese when you're down there because you can't find someone to live with or you can't make the money you need to and i think that if you want something bad enough i mean it will kick in if you don't then you'll sit in the couch and you'll enjoy life too i mean i'm one of those guys who just like do what you want to do 
but just do it to the full, you know, even if that's sitting on the couch, sit on the couch all goddamn day. That's fucking great. Like, I mean, that's, I mean, it's just great. Um, but like the thing is, Nate, so I have to ask, what, what, what do your parents think about this? What does your family think about this? How, how, how are you dealing with that? Uh, they don't like it. Oh. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I'm not, I'm not surprised, Nate. That's why I'm asking. Like, how are you dealing? I mean, this is scary. It's, yeah. this is like. No, they don't, they don't like it. I mean, they, ever since I took that first trip and. I've been like this my whole life, but ever since the ring with the bulge, which is like five years ago, four years ago, they've just seen me escalate and, uh, and they just know they can't stop me. I mean, I'm very goal driven. Like I transferred to Virginia with complete risk. Cause I was like, screw it. If it doesn't work. It doesn't work. So this is kind of built up and they just know that they, they can't stop me, which is sad to a degree. Um, I'm so asphyxiated with doing this stupid stuff. But I remember when I was traveling, what brought me home in the end was my family. I was just uh, depressed because I needed my family. So in the end, I came back for them. Mm. But you, to a degree, like you gotta live the way you gotta live your life the way you want to live your life. And if you try to hinge those decisions on others too much, especially now when you're not back down like us, like exactly, you don't have kids or you don't have whatever i mean when are you gonna do it then you know i'd much rather die scaling a cliff than live an extra 10 years and do nothing work in an office holy shit um nate i mean like you know the, the crazy thing is, is i hear people talk like this all the fucking time i like i hear people say oh you got to do what you want like you got to live the life you want but there's yeah. so, 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 like, the amount of people that actually live by that motto, the amount of people that actually do that, like, none, not none. Like, no one who has ever told that to me, I, like, I look at their life and I'm like, holy shit, yeah, you're doing it. Like, uh, yeah, I, I agree with your <laughs> advice. But, Nate, like, yeah. I will take it like, I mean, like you're doing it, you are doing it. And the greatest thing is what I like about the way you explain everything is you don't sugarcoat the bullshit. Like you, you're saying right away, it was shitty. Like you ate a uh, rotisserie chicken and some bread for a week. Like that's <laughs> not like, you don't look forward to that kind of shit, but you have to decide if this is what I want to do, I'm going to go do it. And All if right. I do it, I'm going to take the shit that comes with it. Right, yeah, yeah. I, I, I like it. It really is impressive. I don't know. Like, I, I'm just going to be honest. I don't know if I'd be able if I don't know if I could do that. I don't. Um, well, you don't need to. I mean, you don't need to. Like, yeah, no, but I'm not. No, I'm not even saying about traveling like period. I'm just saying like, do I have it in me to go against like what this not like the status quo or what like is expected of us? Like you grow up, you graduate, you go get a job like that stuff. Am I able to just drop all that and do me like to go chase my passion? Like, well, I'm you can try. This? The thing is, you can try, and then you can fail, and you might fail, and uh, and you probably will, to be honest. Exactly. But if you don't try, you never, you never know. And like, my big thing is like, yeah, like money's important. You do need a job. Fuck, I need a job. I had to work to save a little money to get that plane ticket. Like, yeah. You're gonna have to work, or you're gonna have to find a way how to monetize whatever it is you love. You know, if you love eating pancakes. Make a TV show, sell the pancakes if you eat them. <laughs> like, you got to figure a way how to monetize it. And if you don't, which I haven't even fully figured out, that's why I started this Pathfinder thing or, or start to fundraise is if you don't, you're ended, you're stuck with a life that sucks. Because, oh like, God. I'm a realist and I think, like, now I'm going to die. We're all going to die. Like, either leave an impact on the world and then enjoy it while you can, you know? Exactly. Oh my God. Nate, I had no idea. Like I, I, I expected to call you and have this interview and we were going to be joking around, put, you know, sticking figures up, you <laughs> know, like some bullshit, but this is like real. Like this I mean, is yeah. real, Nate. Holy shit. It has been so long. There's been a while. I haven't talked to you in a while. Yeah. It's been I mean, forever. I'm still, I'm still a fucking idiot. I still oh. goof around way too much. 
you know, it makes sense though. It makes sense. Like I do appreciate this. All right. So um, let, be, before we end the, the, this, uh, the thing, I want to know some of your favorite moments. Doesn't have to be the scariest. Doesn't have to be like the most intense, just some favorite moments, some favorite people, people you met. Tell me about these travels, these adventures. Favorite moments from, from my travels. Yeah. From travels. Let's, I want to stick to the travels now. All right. Uh, whew, I don't know. I mean, I mentioned running with the bulls. Yeah. I mentioned uh, scuba diving, the Blue Hole in Belize. That's amazing. Uh, I mentioned skiing backcountry in uh, Patagonia. Uh, but, so Patagonia is an actual place. Yeah, Patagonia is a mountain range in Chile, Argentina. And, awesome. uh, and I lived in there. And uh, But the best thing, fuck, the best experience, I mean – Dude, that's a so super hard question. I mean, those ones are super highs. Those super adrenaline things are oh, pretty yeah. highs for me. Other stuff, people you meet, I mean, dude, you make so many friends. I mean, I, I, one of the coolest things I did is like the end of my trip, I'm coming into Brazil and I'm living on an island, on, a, on an island, not an island, um, <laughs> on an island working construction uh, with this evangelical Christian girl. And, uh, and she's telling me like Halloween is for the devil. It's the worst thing on earth. And I'm minding my own business. You know, you're entitled to your own beliefs, but at the same time, you know, I'm like, yo, Halloween is not for the devil. Like, it's, <laughs> it's to get drunk and to like have a good time. That's Halloween. Yes. A lot. I got kicked out of that place. Right. Oh no. <laughs> you laid <laughs> down the law. All right. I'm, I'm coming back from the Island. My backpack sacks fun in hand. Uh, I'd already left my snowboard with a friend. Um, it's still down there, actually. That's awesome. And, and I'm looking for a bus. I don't know where to go. I need to get to Rio. I think Rio is just a city, but it's actually a fucking huge region, which I had no idea. So I keep saying Rio. They're like, yo, you're in Rio. Like, what are you? <laughs> like, no, I need to go to the, all right, the center. And uh, this one woman's like, do you need internet to find a hostel? I was like, yeah, that would help. Because, you know, you're, you're down there in third world country. You got no internet you got nothing yeah and she's like oh you can come to my place and uh use the internet and i was like all right work so I, I follow her into a basically a favela which is like a, a ghetto yes in brazil yeah and uh next thing you know i'm sleeping on her floor for seven days with her family and i'm they have the rooms i'm literally on the on the tile floor with a blanket for seven days and uh and i became fluent in portuguese because no one spoke any english and i'm stuck in the middle of this ghetto playing soccer and like in a cage with holes in it on this like dirt that it was absurd and and i loved it it was like one of the best times of the trip it was so good nice they were so nice to me and i was like so out of my element like we're hopping the the fence to take the train which has no doors because they don't have money and i'm just like fuck it, i don't have any money at this point so i gotta do the same stuff i don't have pants i don't own pants anymore at this time of the trip i just have these sweatpants which have been ripped in half and i don't wear a shirt anytime anytime because it's so hot so i'm like never wearing a shirt no one wears a shirt so i'm like fitting in that's and, amazing uh, and i remember that was like the best that was the best week that was incredible Incredible. That sounds incredible. Did you get the internet? I, I, oh, she did have internet. Yeah. Okay. She didn't, but oh she was like, God. just stay with me for a week or eight days, nine days. So, cooking for me. I mean, what? Like, it was amazing to see. Like, literally just out of nowhere. And it was like, you just like were there? I was just there. I'm not, and that was like the fourth time I'd been living with someone. I mean, I remember one time. I was living in the, in the van, which wasn't my van. Someone had paid for the van and invited me to live in it. And I was like, let's go. I want to ski. Got one meal. And that one meal that I paid for in the whole week, I sat behind this guy and I was talking about something. He turned around, started talking to me. Five minutes in, he's like, hey, I don't know what your plan is to go back, but like you could come check out this apartment I have for free. And uh, went down. I was going to hitchhike back uh, like 20 hours or whatever. And checked out his apartment and he's like yeah you can stay here it turns out to be a penthouse 21st floor apartment in the center of santiago which is one of the biggest cities in south america 
Yeah, that was my and Spanish name. Holy shit, penthouse! You got to like, stay there for free. I'm literally like, what, dude? This is insane. Insane. Oh my god, Nate. Yeah, Nate. That was one. One. I think one time this guy bought a house for me. Basically, another guy, dude. He's like, just come live with me. He lives in the countryside, no near no one. No one. He's just smoking weed all the time. Just like. <laughs> I'm just sitting there like, what is going on? It's absurd. That's insane. I, that I mean, me. holy shit. Like, if you like to travel, that's that's what you should be doing. Yeah, I don't, that's, I don't know if that's going to happen to most people. But. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like, I mean, it sounds like it was great times, but you, you just said that was a week. That was seven days. That was a week. Um, that's that's three weeks out of seven months. It doesn't sound like you're yeah. in the penthouse for all five or six months, you know? So yeah, no, there's a lot of highs and lows, you know, you're like walking, exactly. you're walking. I, I remember one day I had, I had the biggest high and the biggest low. I was like, thought I was like living on a mountainside and then I almost died. Yeah. I like, That's, I mean, <laughs> shit happens. Oh my God. Oh my God. So you have no uh, intention of traveling your way back up here to mass, huh? You know, I went back one time, um, uh, and I had to do this stupid couch surfing thing, which I hated up there. I got lost in Chestnut Hill at like four, four in the morning from some party. Jesus. And I was like, dude, I don't know if I should come back here. No. <laughs> and I'm not like, I don't know. I did. I was also kind of a dick towards the end of high school to a lot of people. So, you think so? I don't know. Maybe. Hey, you're like, you're, you're a real, you're a softy. Let's be real. A dick? Really? Maybe I don't you're know. Real. You don't know? Maybe the, maybe the girls, I wasn't the nicest. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking about girls, do you have a girlfriend? Do you have a partner that you travel with? No, I don't have a girlfriend, but I do have friends I, I like to travel with. But mm. and that's awesome. No. I mean, like, I mean, when you the when you talk, like, it makes me think of my ex girlfriend actually, and she was she 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 lived in Argentina as well for I don't know how long, maybe four or five what? months. Yeah. She went, she was a ski instructor in like Wisconsin or Utah. Oh, that's swaggy. That's I know sweet. she's fluent in Spanish. She grew up in noon, went to private school. Like, like you guys are like the same person, just like different gender. And like, uh. like I used to t like, even before like this, like this, when we were dating, I used to talk, tell her all the time, like, yeah, you, you need to meet my friend, Nate. Like you guys <laughs> are the same person you guys. And she, and the thing is like, not only does she speak fluent Spanish, um, she's traveled. She's been to what? Like, I'm pretty sure like 28, 29 countries. Like you guys would, like yeah. you guys would have, I know. She's 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 kind of great. She's kind of great, but right now she's in med school. What's up with you? What are you doing? You're just sitting sitting around working. So yeah, so me, I'm like, so like, your passion is traveling. Your passion is doing all this crazy shit. Like my passion, I don't know if you want to compare passions. Say one's cooler than the other, because I would have to say yours is pretty damn cool. Like now, it makes you you make me feel insecure about what I like. But. <laughs> <laughs> um, but like this thing that I'm doing, like literally like this interview, what we're doing right now is yeah. what I would consider my, like uh, this. Yeah. Like this is what I want to do. That's why I've been literally, I go to work. I work three days a week because I'm a nurse. We do 12 hour shifts. So that gives me four days off. But on my four days off, like you, you don't like I'm up from like six in the morning, seven in the morning, editing videos that I've done with people until like I have an interview appointment with someone go do the interview, come back home, like stay up until like one in the morning editing. And like the best part about it is like, I enjoy it. Like yeah. shit, like I might not like, like setting up and editing. Like my dream is to get someone to do all that fucking editing so I can just do <laughs> the interviews. Right. So I could just do the talking. Like I want to be like a Joe Rogan. I want to be like an Ellen DeGeneres. Yeah. I, like that's the shit. Like that's the goal. Right. But, um, yeah, like Nate, it's the thing is, it's the, the best part about this is like, I love talking to someone who's doing their thing that is not, um, considered the norm. Right. That is my age. Yeah. That's someone who hasn't been through it all. That's like going through the rut right now. Um, it's kind of great. Nate, you're, you're, you're a fucking hero. You're no, my hero. No, I'm not a hero. No <laughs> chance. Is, you sure are. I'm telling you, Nate, shit's real. Shit is real. Um, well, thank you for coming on, Nate. Um, I don't know. I'm going to, uh, what I do want from you though, is, is please, if you have time, whenever, um, like I said, there's a lot of people that I still have to put up. 
Um, so please send me pics, um, your social links, like Facebook, Instagram, all that stuff, like within the next two to three weeks, because I won't be putting it up for the next two to three weeks. Right. Um, but with that being said, Nate, please let us know. Is there any um, social media you want people to follow? Any you know website you want people to go to? Any shit you want people to donate to? Uh, you know, right now, no. I do have a website. It's called thepathfinder.co. But like I said, I've taken a break for a while. So mm -hmm. I got a couple cool things up there. Um, same ambition as you do to do it. I think I figured that out. So I got like two episodes and I was like, all right, dude, I'm way too fucking lazy to do this. Wait, your mission? I had two episodes. I was doing kind of this, this type thing of, yeah, but not heroes, more like just stories. Exactly. Um, and I just, I lost speed. I lost, I lost the drive I needed. Yeah, no, because like, I'm just going to be honest with you, Nate, you don't, um, as like, sure. Like that should be something you do, but like just listening to you talk, like you, you, you need to be the dude doing. I know, not, like, you're telling yeah, me, dude, I'm trying to do this <laughs> shit. dude. <laughs> like, yeah, I, I don't think you like, of course, of course, if this is some shit you do, you go, you travel, you do, and you record and uh, talk to other people about their stories. But it sounds to me like you need to be the doer. Like yeah, you well, need to be doing you gotta get the money to be the doer. I know the struggle is fucking real. Dude. I think the next the next trip I'm doing is I'm going across Asia on a motorbike, the entire continent. You're going across that. the entire continent of Asia on a motorcycle. And that's the next one. If I do football, I'll do it after football. If I don't, then I'll do it. All know, right. So are you gonna wait? Wait. Are you like? Because you could just go straight across Russia, or you're gonna go to like China. No, no, no. I hit. You gotta hit all lower countries. You go through Iraq, Afghanistan, Jeez. all those sketchy ones. All the sketchy ones. Are they going to let you win? Like uh, I can fail. I got to get my Arabic better, and then I'll be screwed when I get to China. But <laughs> yeah, all right. Yeah. Holy shit. Nate. Be fun. Fuck, man. Thank you for doing this, Nate. I really do appreciate it.